Hey everyone, welcome back to Realms Remembered. This is Michael T. Bradley. Good to see you all back here again. I know it's been a while, um, and I'm saying that now, recording this first one in April, God only knows when this will actually get out. I, I thought I'd make a note of what date it was when I recorded these, since who knows when it is that it'll actually be put up. It's April 6th, 2014, right now. <laughs> I, I, I've been, again, as I mentioned, finding uh, the new library here and uh, uh, finding lots of fun stuff. Just to give you a taste of some of the stuff that I've been reading uh, that I've really enjoyed, Stephen King's Colorado Kid in Joyland, Steve Hamilton, Cold Day in Paradise, Winter of the Wolf Moon, read some more on the Horus Heresy for 40K, Gregory MacDonald's The Brave, Ed McBain's Cop Hater, and the, uh, the sequel, uh, The Mugger. And um, I am doing a uh, uh, book club with a friend of mine where we're going through the 40K Space Marine Battles series. Uh, we're uh, on the third book now. So, yeah, it's, uh, um, I'm, I'm just reading a ton of other stuff, and uh, The Realms has kind of been pushed to the back. Everything's a circle. It'll swing back at some point. So anyway, I, I wanted to uh, uh, cover some stuff here today because it's been a while, and I had enough for at least one recording for probably over a month, and I need to get around to it. First off, a couple of skips. Uh, Black Staff by Stephen Shend. Started out with a bunch of kids, and I just couldn't follow it. It was, it was, it was an odd way to start it out. I, I, I really like, uh, what's his name, Aaron uh, uh, Blackstaff. I really like him, and so I was excited to read this, but it was just dull as hell, and I hope nothing of import happens there. Also, Blood Walk by James P. Davis just did not agree with me. I, I don't even remember anything about it. I think, like, there were nosebleeds and magic came about it and blah, blah, blah. So that's... Half, I think, of the, the Wizards stuff just down right away. And uh, that's frustrating because the stu it seems like the stuff that I'm liking, I'm really, really liking. And the stuff that I don't like, I'm just not digging at all in this uh, section that we're in right now. It, it's like the stuff that doesn't agree with me. I just, you know, I kind of push through about 30 pages, 10%. Um, and it's, uh, ugh, sometimes it, it's just, it, I can't even get that far. It just doesn't agree with me at all. So let's talk about uh, Farthest Reach and Final Gate, the last two books in the last Mythal trilogy. Read those, really enjoyed those. Richard Baker, still, obviously. I'm going to make a few points, and then I have some things that I highlighted for fun. Um, I honestly don't remember what most of those are, so that'll be interesting. First off, the love story is a little overly telegraphed, but still, I enjoyed watching it play out. Though, I don't know, I I guess it makes sense in here. But I was a little frustrated because, you know, with, uh, uh, oh god, Return of the Archwizards by Denning, we got a, we had a poly relationship at the end, and I, I kind of wondered, you know, couldn't we just still have that here? It does make sense if you read this book that, I mean, A, I'm assuming those are different types of elves, because these are all the kind of stick-up-your-ass elves, I think, overall. So it, it does kind of make sense, uh, but uh, and and the other thing is that in here the uh, the two that uh, the the two elves who did have a relationship and then it's broken up and 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 half of them goes with somebody else, you know the two who are broken up really just don't have much in common. But I was like, just because they've changed, I you know maybe there could be some crossover for a while and they find a different way to be close. I don't know. It's it's uh. I think it works either way, but I was a little frustrated that we didn't at least see that again, like how, you know, we still really care about each other. It's it's just, it's not like it once was, and I'm going to add someone to the mix who does give me those uh, happy butterfly feelings. But in any case, uh, it still worked. It You know, it's weird. If a book is just a love story, I'm pretty bored by it, a book or a uh, a movie or whatever, but if there's lots of other crazy stuff going on and there's a love story in it, I'm I'm happier. Usually, it says more about me than the books. <laughs> I like the idea that even a gift from an Eladrin has a steep price. Erebin turns into like Super Sonic or whoever the Gold Sonic is that goes around and like is amazing and nothing can hurt it. Yet he has to deal with a lot of fallout because of it. 
you always kind of see like people making deals with devils or whatever and uh the the fallout from that and how there's always a steeper price than you realize but here it's a gift from an Aladrin and it still has a steep price you know so it's a half angel uh, uh or no that's diva but uh, an Aladrin is is like a higher up elf or whatever i i don't know but you know they're heavenly and it still has a steep price like he he essentially becomes too good and can't really interact with humans very well. And that is part of his character. Something I think this is from book one that I forgot to mention. I really, or well, I, I knew that I would get around to it later and I just didn't have much time left. I really liked how Erevan, when he's thinking about whether he's going to grab this stone or not, you know, he's weighing the pros and cons and then he realizes I'm too curious not to do it. And so he just grabs it because he's, he's like, it could be a trap and he's trying to think through, if this were a trap, blah, 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 blah. And then at, at the end, he's just like, I'm going to do it anyway. So I'm just going to take it. Let's uh, uh, let's real quickly <laughs> take a look at any of the, uh, the notes that I made, the highlights that I made here. Okay, so uh, this is um, this is tied. The first note that I found is, is tied to a note that I have uh, later in my, you know, I've got two types of notes here. So I'll, I'll do this note first. I thought the underground stuff was really well written. I'm pretty sure this is in book two. I felt vertigo at times. Like, it was so well done, them descending into this chasm, and there's this fight, like, in the darkness, and you could fall to your death at any moment. It it really, really was uh, heart-stopping at times. Really well done. And I kind of love, hate how it just starts to get interesting, that whole section, and Erevin pulls a Leroy Jenkins... <laughs> I, I And I made a little quote here. Who could guess? So the she in this uh, sentence is referring to this dark queen in this underground lair way, way, way deep in the underground. Who could guess how long she had ruled over the cold, changeless dark of Lorisphere? And it's like, well, she could probably guess. And that whole section is that she's willing to parlay. Like, she wants something, obviously, and it would be difficult to form an alliance with her, but she's not, she never shows any hint that she's going to screw them over. It's totally like, well, I, I want to use the orbs or whatever they are first. You want to use them first. Let's talk. And then Araman's just like, ah, hell with it. Kill everybody. <laughs> I thought it was an interesting way to play that scene. And it makes sense with Aravin and his hubris throughout the entire trilogy for him to do that. And it worked really well, uh, but I was also kind of like, really, man? Really? My other notes, uh, one I talked about uh, at book one, uh, another one was something that I was kind of confused by, and then I realized that at the end of the book, because I, I, I downloaded the Kindle version, and so so I didn't realize the end of the book had this nice glossary of terms, and so I, I highlighted this one thing, Alias Sideri or whatever it is, where I was like, I, I get through context what this is, but how odd that he just throws in this elven stuff so often and it's like the glossary at the back tells you what it is so um one of the frustrations of reading on kindle though i do like it overall especially since like this era of the books i actually i i own the books for the uh, uh the twilight war stuff but i started on shadow uh bread i think is the first one and uh, the physical books that, that the print is so tiny that i cannot read it so i had to buy the kindle version as well and then the only other note that I had is I highlighted Zalf, who's uh, uh, like the main antagonist's son. He's one of the demon elves. And I just, I, I you know, I know it's hard to create names and everything, but Zalf, really? All I could see when I would think that is, you know, it's a play on Ralph. And so then I would always hear Ralph Mouth in my mind. So it was Zalf Mouth every time he was on screen and I could not take him seriously at all. Also, I apparently made notes from the book that I really should have just highlighted on the Kindle, but instead I wrote them into here. I, I don't know why, but I highlighted it because Baker, just again, I've, I've mentioned this before, he has this crazy like 1930s serial way of writing bad guys. You feckless fool! You would destroy a work 12,000 years old? You are little more than a vandal. Then later in that paragraph, <laughs> ungrateful whelp! I will flens your soul for that. How does one flens a soul, for God's sake? I think Penny Arcade, actually, 
made fun of that. And I really want to know, was it specifically talking about this book? At the time, I think I assumed it was a 40K reference, because that seems very 40K. But yeah, maybe it was this book, Soul Flensing. It certainly sounds painful, but when you think about it, it's like, what the hell is that about? So the big thing to come out of this book is that the elves have returned. Somewhat, except that it really just seems like there's kind of this this one little section of elves uh, led by, uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, actually, he dies, uh, so never mind that. Can't remember his name, and it would be a spoiler if I did. So, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, but there's this, this selection of elves, and the thing is, is that if you look at the uh, timeline that we're using, it says that this ends much later. And so I, I didn't read Final Gate. I started on Shadowbred. And uh, the wizard stuff, I I'd skipped through two of the wizard stuff, so I went ahead and started on Shadowbred. And then in Shadowbred, I realized it's referencing the elves' return. And by the end of book two, that's just kind of a thing that one guy is pushing. Uh, that that guy who uh, apparently I spoiled there because he died. But in Shadowbred, it's such a like background thing, and I just felt like, well... <sighs> shit, I don't want to spoiler a lot of stuff by reading this, so I guess i got to go back and read Final Gate up to the point where it skips ahead, and literally the epilogue is like six years in the future of everything else, and it's just like, hey, how's everything going? Awesome. <laughs> and and so, uh, uh, so it really all takes place in 1374, except for that one flash forward that doesn't ruin anything you know it's not like oh and then we had to fight all those dragons or you know whatever there's nothing like that also i wanted to say that although i really uh liked all of them in book one by book three i could not keep any of aravin's companions straight except the janazi everybody else was just like wait when did this person come along were they the people from that one i don't even know and and book three did get a bit repetitive it's like Aravin and company face dangers hunting down a shard. That's why they are shard, not uh, not baubles or whatever the hell I said earlier. Isabel does diplomacy stuff. Feyre versus elves. Wash, rinse, repeat. It got really like kind of I I won't say dull, but I I skipped a lot and didn't feel like I was missing much. Come book three, book one I think was by far the best. Book two was decent and pretty solid, and then by book three, really the only thing that I was looking for was who's going to die, and uh, are they going to go through with the love story, which they did. And, you know, I'm that I'm okay with, I because book one was so strong that I'm okay with that, but it does really kind of whimper out. I'm wondering the anthology, Realm of the Elves, I might circle around and try that out at some point to see if it really adds anything or not, but I know that I tried reading a couple of those stories at the beginning of all this when I was like, I'm going to read every single short story <laughs> in uh, uh, the correct chronological order, and that quickly got put by the wayside. But I, I remember the one or two that I did read didn't seem to have anything to do with anything. So, you know, I'm assuming they're just stories in which elves exist and maybe showing parts of the fairies, uh, original uh, damnation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. N not really anything that's going to suddenly make book three feel stronger. So, you know, uh, that's what I'm assuming. So, this has gone on quite a while. Next time, we'll probably get into the Twilight War. Though we've got a couple of other Wizards books as well all taking place here. That'll be exciting. I will see you next time. This is Michael T. Bradley, Realms Remembered.